Thank you very much. Can you hear me well? Okay. The war against Jim Crow and discrimination. I was born in Selma, Alabama, raised in Mobile, Alabama, and received much of my education uh, in the South, uh, encountered many difficulties in receiving that, some that has been enumerated by the gentlemen who have just spoken. So you can see that we had a big job to do with creating this war against discrimination. I received my nursing uh, education in Montgomery, Alabama, and uh, worked a little bit in civilian hospitals, and then uh, went to New York and uh, worked there at Seaview Hospital, Staten Island, New York. Uh, we heard one of the patients yelled, cried out, and all of us nurses ran to see what has happened. Well, Pearl uh, Harbor had been bombed, and that was her home. And so that was the beginning uh, of the war. Uh, of course, they needed nurses, and so they advertised for nurses. And uh, most nurses were very patriotic, or quite a number, let's say, and they applied, black and white. Well, the, the black nurses applied, and they said, there is no regulations that will permit us to uh, receive you in the military. Well, that was quite a shock. Uh, we knew there were going to be patients, and many of them. Uh, but uh, I think they underestimated the power of women. <laughs> when that... <laughs> When they said that, uh, nursing organizations uh, throughout the country and Mrs. Roosevelt, they all made beelines to the Surgeon General's office saying, you must receive these women. Um, well, after this is my version, and I guess he said, I'm sick of these women. Okay, we'll take 54. <laughs> and. Uh, 54 black nurses uh, uh, were received in the military. Well, what did they do with them? Well, they said, you, well, we'll take you, but you can only take care of black soldiers. I thought, that's strange. So uh, we came in with that in mind. You always, you, you, you know, take what you can, and a little later on, maybe you'll get more. So we did. And um, they sent these nurses to Fort Huachuga, Arizona. Uh, and there they remained. Uh, and not one of us were able to go overseas to really assist our sister nurses. Uh, but we did take care of the soldiers who came back. So we figured we did a great job. But saying that we could only take care of black soldiers, uh, it limited us. The, the, the 43rd Division uh, was at Fort Huachuca, and they were black soldiers. Well, they were sent overseas. Now, what are you going to do with all of these black nurses? <laughs> you don't have any black soldiers. <laughs> And uh, of course, we had the German and the Italian prisoners of war at that time. And uh, I was sent to the uh, prisoner of war camp at Florence, Arizona. Well, uh, Florence, Arizona uh, was supposedly a bit liberal. They had one black family living uh, in the area. When we arrived, signs went up. 
we reserved the right uh, to refuse anybody. So that meant that we black nurses, nurses at Florence uh, could not go into the establishments there. But you know, we didn't, we didn't even try there because of uh, Phoenix, the bus ran from the camp to Phoenix. So we all took the bus and went into Phoenix and had a nice lunch and shopped because they were far more liberal uh, than Florence, Arizona. How, uh, but the uh, prisoners of war uh, were not difficult uh, to take care of because they were very happy to have been captured by Americans because they said they knew that they would get good care. And they did get good care. There we stayed I mean, uh, maybe six or eight months at the camp. Then we went to uh, Camp Beale. That was a little bit better. Uh, you had integrated soldiers, but the nurses were still segregated. We, we lived in our own barracks, and uh, we worked together, but we did not eat or play together. And that uh, proceeded uh, until I went to Halloran Hospital, Fort Dix, New Jersey. All of those, we were still segregated. Uh, and we thought, one day, this is going to disappear. I, and we always hoped that it would happen. And I think I was at school um, at Fort Sam Houston, Texas. And uh, I went there to take a course in psychiatry. And uh, I think the uh, teachers were totally aware of the fact. They, there were three black nurses. They put one in one building, one at the end of the other building, and the other one at the end. And this was the beginning of trying to integrate us and it forced us to study together, and uh, we did. And we all did well. From there, uh, I went overseas, and I believe when Mr. Truman said uh, integration no longer, uh, that is when we began to integrate. You don't, they don't do it right away. It is a gradual thing, and uh, gradually, we all became integrated. And strangely enough, um, as I said to someone, when we were totally integrated, then the, shall I say, I can use the white nurses ex accepted us quite well, but there wasn't any difficulty. The rules, the laws were the things that, per that uh, permitted us not to be integrated. And from that time on, uh, we worked very well together. I like to say that taking care of the soldiers as they came uh, back from overseas uh, was a pleasure. And uh, there was a time they they wanted to know whether we wanted to, when the war end, ended, they wanted to know whether we wanted to stay in the military, quite a number of us. And I was one of those who said, okay, I'll stay. And I stayed and I spent 27 years uh, in the military, and I was able to move from, uh, when we said a private to a general, but I would say from a second lieutenant to a colonel, which was the highest rank that women could receive at that time in the military. And We did a fine job of uh, really getting discrimination off the book. I would say to you that that was very good, but I, I don't want you to be, today it's, it's interesting, you must watch. There is a little undercurrent. It's not, it hasn't gone totally, but we do work well. And I must say, it was a pleasure uh, being a nurse 
uh, and the military, taking care of the soldiers. There, there's nothing greater, uh, of course, being a nurse, there's nothing greater than taking care of people. And, and that, that I love. And since I spent my career doing that, I feel very honored. And to have done it in the military, I feel twice as honored. Thank you. Oh.